This is our last stand. And if we lose, it will be a planet of apes. He said it! He said it! War for the Planet of the Apes is the third movie in the Planet of the Apes prequel franchise and it is directed by Matt Reeves who also directed Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and is going to be directing the upcoming solo Batman movie. And this movie stars Andy Serkis and Woody Harrelson. And this movie takes place about five years after the previous movie, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And it starts with a uh, sort of Star Wars-y feel prologue that sort of summarizes the uh, previous movies. And here we see Caesar and his group of apes are all hiding out in this cave. And while they're here, a group of soldiers find this hideout. And this begins to threaten him and his entire family of apes. <gasps> so first thing I want to talk about is that me and Zach both loved the first two. The Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And so we were highly anticipating this movie. Yeah, I feel like in this trilogy they improved on each movie. And adding on to that, each movie the tone gets darker and darker. And that's one of the things I liked the most about this movie was that it felt so dark. This is a post-apocalyptic world and it truly felt like that. The, the color scheme, everything about the atmosphere of this movie. One big thing I do want to warn everybody about is that even though the title says otherwise, this is probably the slowest movie in the trilogy. But it's not a bad slowness to it. It's actually very well put together. It is a very smoothly edited movie. And every single thing that happens is very necessary to the plot. And another thing about this movie is it really brings out the character of Caesar. In all three of these movies, you know, you see that uh, Caesar is developing with intelligence and he also becomes more human and he begins to have these inner conflicts with himself about certain decisions that he makes because he doesn't want to go too far to one side but at the same time he feels like a lot of the things that he really wants to do are necessary. Yeah, and I'm going to be totally honest, when we look back on these movies several years in the future I honestly feel that we're going to look at Caesar as a truly iconic character. He's not just this war-driven ape that wants the apes to be in control of all the humans. He actually has compassion towards the human race. He just wants to protect his family and make sure that his whole family of apes is safe, first and foremost, while still having compassion for the humans. And these movies really make you hate the human race because you could be watching this, you're like, oh, that's just a movie. Uh, portraying humans as awful, but you look at this movie and you're like, I really think this is how humans would act in these situations. And that kind of brings me to another character that you hate, but you love how they did him. And that is Woody Harrelson's character as his general. And he is just so fantastic. Woody Harrelson gave a very good performance in this movie. And his character was just so well written too, because you see this really terrible guy just killing these apes. Caesar has given him options to choose from, they're very good options, and Woody Harrelson just keeps going against them, and you're wondering why, and later on, you start seeing how deep of a character Woody Harrelson actually is, and you start learning more about this virus, this epidemic that happened at the end of the first one. And one of the highlights of this entire trilogy is the special effects, because you know, the, these apes aren't actually there in person. They're completely computer animated. The actors do use motion suits, but they pretty much completely make them on a computer. And then you have the pro of these CGI characters, which is Andy Serkis, who is people like Gollum and King Kong, and he really gets into this character, you actually see how great of an actor Andy Serkis really is because before you never really get to see much of his acting but starting here lately he's been really going up there and this movie really uses the second movie to its benefit because you know the first movie is really good but you can probably watch the second one and be okay without watching the first one. But this third one, you really have to watch the second one because everything that happened in that second one just fully 
transforms everything in this third movie. Now the one negative thing that I can say about this movie, and it's not really a huge negative, while I love the ending and I thought it was a fitting conclusion to this trilogy, there's just something about it that I feel like they could have made it a little bit stronger. It, it just, it was missing something. I can't really put my finger on it but I did love this entire movie overall. And to add on to negatives, uh, which like that one, it wasn't a big negative, but then I have another negative, which is I feel like there's a few moments, not a whole bunch of them, there's a few moments where things just happened a little too easily for the apes. So guys, please go out and watch this movie. It is definitely a perfect and fitting conclusion to this trilogy. So I'm gonna go ahead and give War for the Planet of the Apes an A. Yeah guys, if you enjoyed the previous two movies, Rise and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, then you're definitely going to enjoy this movie. It's definitely a well-written movie. It's definitely a well-acted movie. Special effects are great, everything about it. So I'm going to give War for the Planet of the Apes an A-. And guys, I just want to give a big shout out to Under One Hour and Michael Joles for letting us read his book and uh, to talk about it on our channel and to give us a few shout outs on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, that is this book, which is uh, The Film of Sam Mendes, Under One Hour. And if you are interested in reading this book and buying it, I will put a link in description to Amazon to purchase this book. Well guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also comment below and let us know what you thought about this review. Also let us know what you thought about the movie and also tell us which of these three movies was your favorite? Maybe even rank them below. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Two Awesome Men. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us later.